Reservoir sedimentation is probably the most common application of sediment transport models, and there's a very good reason for that. Reservoirs turn rivers into lakes and tend to collect decades of the river sediment load in that impoundment, and reservoir managers need to decide what to do with that sediment and how to manage it, what the lifespan of the dam will be, if there are ways that they can extend the lifespan of the dam, if there are ways to reintroduce sediment continuity. Lots of questions that surround the sediment engineering and sediment analysis field really circle around the question of the sediment issues associated with dams. So we're going to do a series on reservoir sedimentation modeling with HEC RAS. We're going to th step through several ways to analyze sediment transport in reservoirs. We'll start out with a couple of videos on how to analyze deposition in reservoirs and reservoir life cycle. Then we'll have a couple of videos on reservoir sediment management, um, modeling reservoir flushing, things of that nature. And then hopefully we'll do a video or two on dam decommissioning and removal just to kind of finish the dam life cycle and the types of applications HC RAS gets applied to. This video will just introduce a couple of very basic principles of reservoir sedimentation and the two main ways that you can set up a quasi and steady reservoir model. Then the next video will actually step you through the process of setting up those two models. My name is Stanford Gibson. I am the sediment transport specialist at HEC and in charge of the sediment transport features in HEC RAS. Now before you model any sediment process, it's really important that you understand how that process works. This video won't go deep into sediment transport processes and reservoirs, but let's just cover a couple of basic principles. The first thing is that most reservoirs form some sort of delta. The coarser sediment deposits upstream, the finer sediment deposits downstream, and you develop a delta almost like a smaller scale version of as a river flows into the ocean. You end up with a prograding wedge um, where you have a gradual top set slope and then a steeper four set slope that is advancing into the pool. Whereas you have finer sediment that deposit beyond that four set slope. And the shape of this delta is really dependent on the gradation of the sediment flowing into your reservoir. This is a reproduction of a classic image from the textbook Morrison fan where they classify different kinds of reservoir deposition. You know, you've got the classic delta where you have the prograding wedge into the pool. And then you have at the other end of the spectrum, you have a, a wedge where essentially all the sediment is fine and it deposits from the bottom up, like filling a bathtub. And then you have tapering or uniform, just which really aren't their own categories, but are just points within the continuum between those endpoints. And so different reservoirs, depending on their gradation, behave in different ways. You know, coarser rev reservoirs will form this very distinct delta that will prograde into the pool. Whereas reservoirs that bring in finer material, will have more of the tapering or uniform or even wedge configuration. So if you're interested in how quickly your reservoir will fill, a little bit of trap efficiency math and a sediment rating curve, you can estimate the life cycle of your dam. You want to get a model involved if you're interested in what is the distribution of your sediment in the reservoir, what is the shape of your delta, and what are the feedbacks as your sediment fills up, will the trap efficiency change? And then finally, if you want to do any sort of reservoir sediment management, flushing, drawdown, things of that nature, a sediment model is almost compulsory. So if you're interested in sediment processes or sediment management, these are two great references that are available online. What we're going to do is we're going to model reservoir sedimentation in HEC RAS. This video will talk about two ways to model reservoir sedimentation in quasi-unsteady flow. So you can model sediment in HEC RAS in either quasi-unsteady or, or unsteady flow. Unsteady flow is more precise, but it's also harder. Quasi-unsteady flow is a lot more stable. You can usually run longer run times. And so for most sediment transport applications, quasi and steady is the way to go. The problem is, is that quasi and steady does not conserve water volume, which generally in a riverine environment, you're more interested in conserving sediment volume than water volume. And the quasi and steady approximation is fine. That simplification becomes more problematic in a reservoir. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to use unsteady flow to simulate sediment transport in a reservoir. But if you're going to use quasi and steady flow, and because it is in fact still more stable, you can do that. You just can't 
route flow through your reservoir. You can't allow your reservoir to actually route the water through it. You have to define the stage of your reservoir. And so there are two ways that we do that. The first and simplest way is just to define your downstream boundary condition as your reservoir stage. What would this look like on a reservoir? Well, let's go to a reservoir in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. This is Fall Creek Lake. And files that come with this video include a paper we wrote on modeling this reservoir. And basically the idea here is that we are going to draw a cross section across the upstream edge of the dam, and we're going to end the model there. We are going to end the model before we even get to the dam because dam operations will complicate things. If we know the stage of the reservoir, we don't have to route water through the reservoir. We can just operate the reservoir stage as a downstream boundary condition, and the backwater is often a really good approximation of the hydrodynamics of the unsteady flow, despite the fact that we're doing quasi-unsteady flow. But there are some downsides of this. One of the downsides is you can't model the downstream reach of the reservoir or you can't model multiple reservoirs in series. And so the second method is to actually model the full reach and include an inline structure. The inline structure is the way that we tend to model dams in HC res but you can't actually allow the structure to route the water through it because this is a quasi and steady flow model. We'll talk more about the complexities of that in the next video. And so what you have to do to get a, an appropriate result with quasi and steady is you go ahead and define an internal stage for your reservoir. And then you essentially do the same thing. You operate the reservoir by defining the reservoir stage. Now before we continue, there's one important note about inline structures in RAS sediment simulations. That's that inline structures, dams, whether or not they have gates, are pass-through nodes. A pass-through node in sediment transport just means that all the sediment that comes to the node leaves the node. They're not control volumes, but more importantly, we don't decide how much sediment can pass through them based on the geometry of the structure or the location of the gates. You could imagine these three dams that I'm showing right now would have pretty different sediment behavior as far as what kind of sediment would pass through them, and we ignore that in RAS right now. You know, we're working on features, but the reason is that in general, this doesn't turn out to be as egregious an assumption as it seems like it would be. Except for really small reservoirs or reservoirs where the delta has approached the dam, you know, by the time water reaches the structure, often the sediment that remains in the water is wash load, is the kind of material that could go through or over most gate configurations. But that's still an assumption that you want to assess and make sure that you're not over predicting flux through the dam. In the next video, I'll actually guide you step by step through each of these modeling approaches. But just to show you how the geometry will work, this is the synthetic reservoir data set that I've provided with these videos and flows going from upstream to downstream in the northwest direction. And the dam is going to be at station 10,000. And so this is the existing without dam geometry. And so the way the two different geometry files will look is we have one geometry file where the downstream boundary condition will be at the dam face. So we remove these downstream boundary conditions, and now the first cross-section upstream of our dam becomes the downstream boundary condition for our reservoir stage. And then the second way to do this is to add an internal dam. And so now you can see we've added a dam, an inline structure, at station 10,000, and then we'll add an internal stage boundary condition at that location to specify the reservoir stage. But the next video will walk step by step on how to set up both of those models.